Hi, I'm here again. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. I'm a clinical endocrinologist. And today I'm going to present to you data on whether we can reverse or treat diabetes without medication. If you like this video, please don't forget to click down subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll be updated if there are new videos to be uploaded. We all know that there's no cure for type 2 diabetes, but we know if we diagnose diabetes early, we can still do something about it and reverse the process to go back to normal. Once we reverse the diabetes, it does not mean you're completely cured. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about some of the proven tips to reverse diabetes. This will be a series of videos for everyone to follow. We all know that data from longitudinal epidemiological studies that patients with early stage diabetes can be reversed. It means it's a study in a population for patients na may diabetes, na pre-diabetes or without diabetes and followed them for like 12 years to determine anong factors that will prevent diabetes from developing or what factors were noted na nag-reverse yung diabetes. So this longitudinal study published in Sweden involved around 2,500 individuals na walang diabetes at a group na may pre-diabetes or early stage diabetes and then they were followed up for 12 years. What was noted that a significant 22% of those patients who had early stage diabetes were able to revert to normal within eight years. So what happened? Anong factors involved that made these patients go back to normal? What they found out was, if I compare mo to those individuals with pre-diabetes, compared to those na stable lang ang weight or they not lose weight, the individuals with pre-diabetes or early stage diabetes wherein ang sugar mo is between 100 to 125, pero they lost weight, had an increased likelihood of reverting to normal glycemia. So ibig sabihin, it's the fat that triggered the problem. And if you lose that fat, then you could reverse the process. Furthermore, the individuals with early stage diabetes who were obese, meaning sobra pa sa overweight, we based it on your weight according to your height, a BMI of more than 30, kil 30 kg per meter squared, had a higher risk of progressing to diabetes compared to those with normal weight. Again, showing na one of the major factor na nagpa-progress sa diabetes mo is increased fatness in the body. Weight loss resulted in normal glycemia, but being overweight and obese, risk of progression to full-blown diabetes. So what do these data tell us? That in this longitudinal study, that lifestyle modifications that will promote weight loss can help restore your glucose into normal. Therefore, lifestyle modification that will lead to weight loss can help. Second, that weight management is indeed an effective strategy that we should try in preventing pre-diabetes and its progression to diabetes. How? Possibly because the fat cells make the tissues insulin resistant. Remember, our pancreas produces insulin. Insulin will then drive sugar into the cell. But if the tissue is filled with fat and adipose tissue, 
because of increasing weight, then insulin cannot function properly. So by making the patient lose weight, you improve insulin sensitivity, meaning insulin can work very well in bringing sugar inside the cell. Obviously, one of the major reasons why we have increasing weight is because we're taking too much calories from too much food. Excess calories coming from carbohydrates and fat has three possible fates, meaning if you overeat, this is what happens. So this illustration tells you that the fat coming from the food we eat can either be first oxidized for energy, meaning the excess glucose likewise is converted into fat, and this is then used for energy by the muscle or by the tissues. Second, if you're not utilizing it because you don't move or you don't exercise, then excess calories will be converted into fat and stored in a rather full liver. This is where fatty liver comes in. But most importantly, it is also exported in the form of triglycerides. So if you look at the blood test, if you have high triglycerides, high triglycerides therefore means you're overeating carbohydrates. It's converted into fat and then delivered to other tissues aside from the liver, but also to the pancreas. Now, what happens to the fat that is delivered to the pancreas? <clears throat> what is the pancreas? Ang pancreas kasi is the organ that produces insulin. You have to take care of it because pag masira ang pancreas, wala ka ng insulin, that's where you become full-blown diabetic. So I don't like fats in the pancreas. Why? So this is the cycle. Too much calories converted into fat in the liver. High fat in the liver will export these triglycerides somewhere else. Where does it go? To the islet cells of the pancreas. Ano ang islet cells? Islet cells are the cells that produce insulin in the pancreas. So pag mapuno na ng triglycerides, ang islet cells, there is more fat. What happens is hindi na makaproduce ng insulin ang pancreas in response to a meal. So the rapid increase of fat in the pancreas precedes the onset of diabetes. So pag hindi na makaproduce ng insulin in response to food, this is where your blood glucose goes up. So it's a cycle affecting the liver, affecting the pancreas. And eventually, pag more and more fat goes into the liver and in the pancreas, then the pancreas di na makaproduce ng insulin, then you develop full-blown diabetes. So if you want to reverse the process, you know where to start. The culprit is the positive caloric balance or too much food. This hypothesis has been proven to be true in studies. If we reduce the pancreatic fat, removing the fat because we remove extra calories from the food, studies have shown that we can reverse the function of the pancreas in terms of producing insulin. So in this counterpoint study, where the patient was given set number of calories. The purpose was to put the patients in a state of weight loss. The individuals lost approximately 15 to 16 kilos. They found out a significant reduction in pancreatic fat. So look at the pancreatic triglyceride content significantly reduced after eight weeks of low caloric diet. In response to the removal of fat from the pancreas, you can clearly see here that there's restoration of the insulin response to a meal. This is what we like. First, we are able to restore the damage of the fat on the pancreatic islets. And this is where reversal of the disease can happen. So after that counterpoint study, was the counterbalance study. Ang purpose ng counterbalance is to determine if you put individuals with diabetes 
on a hypocaloric diet, tapos ibalik mo sila sa isocaloric diet, will there be durability of effect? Meaning, will your reversal of diabetes state continue? Or it will go back to at full diabetic state. So this is the purpose of the counterbalance trial. So in this case, the patients were put on a hypocaloric diet for eight weeks and then put them on isocaloric diet as maintenance after. Those who had effective weight loss, unfortunately, all of them did not have durability of effect, meaning there were those who responded wherein the liver fat fell, na wala yung fat sa liver, na wala yung fat sa pancreas, and pancreas was able to resume producing insulin. But, Meron ding non-responders. And who are these people? Their liver fat fell, na-remove din ang fat sa pancreas, but the glucose-stimulated insulin secretion did not return. Meaning, yung pancreas still was not able to produce insulin. And then those non-responders were found out to have longer duration of the disease. Meaning, the longer they've been diabetic, the more fat there has been in the pancreas and in the liver. So in the pancreatic islet cells, the more destruction there is to the islet cells so that the islets can no longer rebound and produce insulin back. So this has clinical implications. That's why we want to diagnose patients early. We want to treat them early so that we can hopefully revert you back to normal, hopefully still without medications and we can do this as long as you screen early for those patients with a family history of diabetes for those patients who has gestational diabetes especially for those patients who are overweight and obese after those two studies then there's a study to determine if a primary care physician leading the weight loss program can this data translate into outcomes that we've seen as a practice. So this is called the direct data, wherein primary clinical doctors were given recommendations of a hypocaloric diet around 800 calories for their patients, and all their patients were then followed up for two years and see what happened. This is the weight loss and remission study called the direct trial. This direct weight management program actually is in a primary care setting wherein patients were told to consume a liquid 800 calorie diet of processed soups and shakes, including non-starchy vegetables for the next three to five months before they were then progressively reintroduced solid food over a period of further two months. So this research was then continued for approximately two years. But what they found out was that patients who lost more than 15 kilograms result in an 86% remission within 12 months. And this is a staggering result showing that significant weight loss does result in reversal of diabetes. Clearly, therefore, my point of this video is that the direct study after 24 months clearly showed that diabetes is not really a lifelong disease. Yes, it's a chronic disease, but you don't have to burden yourself with medication because we can reverse the process through lifestyle medic modification. If only there's a way that you can be motivated and the physician can actually motivate you to lose weight, you can make a plan, diabetes can be reversed by weight loss. In this trial, 36% remission at 24 months, 64% chance of remission if you lose more than 10 kilos, but 70% chance of remission if you lose more than 15 kilos. What I'm saying here is, we can do this. I've seen my patients revert to normal. In every lectures I do, I always tell my audience, 
My goal when I treat diabetes is to diagnose early. Second, if I diagnose them early, it's not only to prevent them from progressing to full-blown diabetes or to develop complications, but I'm very ambitious. I want them to go back to normal, if possible, reverse diabetes. So I'm a proponent of diabetes reversal. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. Thank you. Please watch for my second video in this series of reversal of diabetes soon.